Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be carrying on with our 3D printing for remote control series. And in this video, we're actually going to do our first print. So we've looked at how we've built the printer, how we've calibrated it. We've looked at all of the software that we need and all of the setup. And now we're actually going to create a little model, a little 20 millimeter calibration cube to the printer. And also what we're going to do is I'm going to show you each of the individual steps for how I use a 3D printer here so that when you come to use yours for the first time or you're looking at setting yours up, the process isn't unfamiliar to you. So first of all, we're going to design a 20 millimeter calibration cube. That is a great little thing to be able to do. Here's one I printed earlier. It allows us to not only check that the printer's working, but also very handy to then measure each side of the cube to see how close to 20 millimeters the printer is actually getting. And we can then use that information when we're designing remote control parts later on to kind of allow for the little bit of um, oozing that you get out the side of the filament. So here we are in SketchUp and we looked at this very briefly in the last video of the series where we actually looked at all the software. I'm going to use SketchUp because again it's very quick and easy to make very accurate models with. Lots of other people will use uh, different tools but this is the one that I'm going to use for the demo today. First thing we're going to do is delete our MakerBot so I'm just going to select it and press delete and then I'm going to use the middle scroll wheel to zoom in, press H for hand and just move the origin back to where we can see it. Now the first thing I want to do is create a cube that's 20 millimeters on each side. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to click on uh, the rectangle, I'm going to draw a rectangle out and then I'm actually going to type in the bottom right hand corner, just type it on the keyboard and it appears 20 millimeters comma 20 millimeters and hit enter. So there is the bottom of my cube. Now I want it to be 20 millimeters high, so I'm going to click on the pull push tool. I'm going to drag it up, and this time again, while the tool is still active, I'm just going to type in 20 millimeters on the keyboard. It appears in the bottom right hand corner. I hit enter, and there is my solid cube. I'm going to press H again and just bring it into the middle of the screen. Now the thing I want to do is actually make the middle of it. Uh, empty. So I'm going to make each of the walls two millimeters and that will also allow me to not only check the overall dimensions of the cube when it's printed but I can also see how it's handling the wall thicknesses too. So the easiest way to do this I'm going to click on this tool down here on the left. I'm going to select the top and I'm just going to drag it in and this time I'm going to type in two millimeters hit enter. Oh, there we go. So now I have a box there now this thing is 20 millimeters high, so to give us a 2 millimeter bottom, this little piece here, if I go back into my push-pull tool and start dragging it down, I just need to type in 18 millimeters and hit enter. Okay, O for orbit. There is my calibration cube. So the next thing we need to do is we need to save this cube as an STL file. We can either normally just save it as a file that we can then edit later on, or we can actually save it as an STL file. So we're going to do that. We've got File, Export STL. We're going to export it in millimeters and we're going to pop it right on the desktop. Here we go. And now the next thing we need to do then is we need to load this into Repetier Host and the slicer to turn this STL file that we've just made from this little model that we just created into G code. So let's start that next. So here's Repetier host. So I'm going to drag our STL file in from the corner of the screen. We could also click load and just navigate to the STL file. So here it comes. And now if we go into slicer, let me just zoom in and you can kind of see it on here. There's our little cube that we've made. Uh, you can see here that there's no red or green bits. That's normally a good indication that there isn't any problems with the geometry in the model. Occasionally you'll get things from websites where the model looks fine but actually won't print very well. And the, the, the cute way to check that that's all right, I would normally click Deep Analysis. At the moment, you can see here that all this information, it's saying that we're actually okay. There's no red um, or kind of highlighted text. If we click Deep Analysis, 
Now it's finished, I'm still good. So I'm pretty confident right now that this is going to print. If there's anything red on here, or any of these different areas were colored, uh, then it would probably mean that I'd have to go back into SketchUp and try and fix the model. It usually means that there's lines inside the model that I can't see. So we'll go into the slicer now. We're confident it's going to work. We're going to use 50% infill. Um, we're going to use all of my standard basic settings here. And again, we talked about before how you can actually configure the slicer to have all of the different settings. And I'll just show you how mine's set up. So in Slicer, the printer settings, um, we actually have the layer height as 0.2 millimeters. The different layer heights will give you different resolutions. Obviously a higher layer height will make it print faster, but there will be less detail. And the first layer height is usually a little bit bigger because that's the one, that's the first plastic that's laid down on the bed and you want to give you your best chance of having a good solid base that you can print from. Um, the vertical shells, the number of perimeters, that's the number of times it goes around the outside. And then we have some other bits and pieces in here too. I would actually say the only things that you need to worry about when you're first printing is just to get your prints underway. And then you can start to tweak this if you see anything that you don't quite like. Again here, we have um, the skirts and the brim. Now skirts are quite useful. Now skirts, when we actually do the slice, you'll notice that there's a couple of loops of plastic around the outside of the model that we're about to print. The reason that we do that in 3D printing is it's very handy to do that because it actually clears any rubbish out of the nozzle. And typically you'll find is when you're preheating the printer, and we'll see this in a second, the plastic that's already in the nozzle tends to get heated, turn into liquid and kind of ooze out. So there's actually a void in the heated end when you first start to print. By printing these couple of loops around the outside, it feeds the plastic in, make sure the plastic is running great before it then starts to print. Um, I found that on a smaller item, um, two is probably not enough. On a bigger item where it's going right around the perimeter, it has more than enough time to get the plastic running. I would probably increase this to um, two or three for a really small item. Otherwise, the plastic isn't running and back in the heated end before you actually start to print. So we'll now slice with slicer. And there it is. So let me just um, zoom in again a little bit and move it so you can see it. So you can see here that those are the two um, lines of plastic that we've just talked about. And there's two of them because there was two in the slicer. Here is the actual model itself and you can kind of see how it's going to look. Um, and that all looks fantastic. We can see here that in the G code, we have all the pieces set about how the printer's actually set up. Here's all the stuff that initially sets how the printer's gonna behave. And then here is all of the moves with all the extrusions to actually print that model line by line, piece by piece. And even for a really small model like this, there's an awful lot of information. And then at the end, we actually have the pieces here where we turn off the bed temperatures and we actually home the printer out and then disable the stepper motors. And then at the bottom, you have lots of extra stuff too. Now we are here. The other two things I'd normally take a note of is the printing time. Reckons it's gonna be about 15 minutes. We'll find out exactly how much it is on the printer. And it's also going to take about 14, millim 14 centimeters or 1396 millimeters of filament to actually print this little guy. So we can either save this down uh, using this button here or we can save it saying save job here. If we are actually connected to our 3D printer uh, using a USB cable and this was green, then we could just click on run job and it would actually run the job. And the really nice thing is it shows here on the graphic, you actually get on this uh, image what's happening. I don't tend to run it that way. I tend to run it from an SD card. I just like to do other things with the PC and be able to turn it off when I'm ready. So I'm just popping the SD card in that we've been using for the S, uh, for the printer. It's actually appearing as J. So uh, here's some other ones that we've printed on before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna go to the uh, J and I'm going to call it something that we'll be able to find on the printer, like 20 millimeter calibration cube. Click save. 
and now that file is actually on there. So if I just click save again, then you can see it's actually there, 20 millimeter calibration cube. It's only about 94 kilobytes in size. It's all of that um, basic information. And now I can unplug that SD card and we can go over to the printer, plug it in and start getting ready to print that piece. The first thing we have to do, of course, is install that SD card into the printer that we've just popped our G-code file onto. So that goes onto the side. So if I power it on, then the printer will initialize. And let me just zoom up onto this screen and kind of talk you through what's on here. So the top two figures are actually for the temperature of the extruders. Then we have the temperature of the hotbed, the Z height or how high it is the feed rate, how fast it's printing, how much of the SD card we've used, and the time we've taken. And that says Delta G2S ready, so we're good. First thing we need to do, or what I do, is always preheat the printer. So um, I go into prepare and down into preheat PLA, and we're just going to set it off to heat the extruder up to 190 degrees, and also put the bed temperature up to about 55. That isn't necessary, but helps it print. So I'm going to just leave this for a second and we'll come back in a minute when it's nearly up to temperature. It only takes a minute or two. So we're nearly there now, we're almost at temperature, so at this point I would tend to press in a little control knob, this time going down to print from SD. Click on there and here are all the G-code files it can see. Obviously we're going to pick 20 millimeter calibration. When I hit enter then the printer will start. Now it's just waiting here for the temperature to settle before it prints, but this is a perfect chance for me to show you how this plastic is kind of leaking out. This is the PLA that was in the heated end already. It's uh, worthwhile taking a little bit of time just while it's settling down, just to take that PLA off the end. It, otherwise it'll interfere with the print when it actually starts to print out. So we're ready, here it goes. Now this is trying to draw those two outside perimeters that we had in our G-code. You can see the first one hasn't worked and the plastic only comes through in the second half of the second round. So that's why I said sometimes having three in there is better. So the first thing it's going to do is to very carefully draw in the base of the cube. You saw the plastic actually catch there a little bit. We'll have to check that. And then it's going to do the three perimeters and then it's going to fill the inside. And here it is doing the 50% infill. So rather than be solid plastic, you can see it's kind of creating that kind of waffle effect to help with lightness. So now on the screen, we can see we've done 18% of the model and we're, um, we're going on a couple of minutes. So we've been going a little bit longer now. We're just finishing the top of the bottom piece. So that is the top of it. So that honeycomb is now enclosed. And now we're starting to do the outside. It is very hypnotic when you first start your 3D printer off. You will sit for hours at a time watching it work, particularly these Rostock style, because these arms moving up and down and the little steppers all moving in unison to actually make this thing happen is, uh, is mesmerizing. So I've been going a little bit longer now. We've been going about five minutes, about 43% of the way through the print. So we're really starting to get through it now. So maybe the 15 minutes is about right. You can see the Z height, we're now 6.7 millimeters above the bed. And that's kind of what it looks like. So we're starting to just draw in each of the corners. So rather than do anything else, it's literally just going and doing the kind of three perimeters and then going up and doing the next level. Again, we're moving 0.2 millimeters for each of these slices. So when we go back to the screen, you'll notice that it'll actually change. So at the moment it's 16.5 and it jumps to 16.7. And you'll see in a second when it's done that, those, uh, that slice, it'll jump to 16.9. There it goes. So 82% done and 12 minutes have elapsed. Nearly at the end now. So you can see how shiny PLA is when it prints. It's um, almost there. So we'll just let it finish off. I'll do one more picture of the screen as it finishes and then I'll show it on the bed and then we'll jump back to show you what it looks like. So finished, complete. 40 minutes elapsed, so slightly quicker than the software said. And there it is, sat on the printer, 
ready to be pulled off the blue tape. So all in all, a reasonably successful print, but let's actually have a look at it on the bench and do the measurements and see how close to 20 millimeters it is. So here's the printed part straight off the bed of the printer. This is the one we've just watched being printed. Now the nice thing is it's actually worked. Uh, there's a couple of little errors at the bottom, so I might have to look at the thickness of the first layer, um, but the rest of it looks pretty good. They always get these kind of vertical lines with Rostock style printers. It just seems to be the way the geometry works um, and the corners are nice and crisp too. So this is supposed to be 20 millimeters high by 20 millimeters on each side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my vernier calipers. Let's see how close the printer got it. So that is slightly over. I'd say that's about 20.15. So it's very slightly over. I'd have to remember that if I wanted to print anything. And the sides, are just over, fractionally over two millimeters. They're about, again, 2.2, .2, so they has squeezed a little bit. But knowing that now, I can now go and start designing things and take that into account when I'm building parts for my models. Take the time to subscribe to the channel and join the Painless 360 community. The videos that we produce are all on our channel and they're all arranged into easy to use playlists. So if you click on the playlist tab, then you'll be able to see all of the videos that we have collected into individual playlists that make it easier to find videos you're interested in. If you click on any single one of these playlists, then you'll actually be taken to the playlist and you'll be able to see all of the videos laid out one after the other and either can play them individually or play all. Or if you came and saw the video that you've just watched by accident and you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe. But also if you look at the top of the description underneath the video that you've just watched, Usually, if it's part of a playlist, one of the first things in the description will be a link back to the playlist so you can find all the other interesting videos that you might like. Thanks again for watching. Please like, do subscribe, and very happy flying.